Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. To use the eyepiece reticule for measuring a cell, we must calibrate it using a stage micrometer. In other words, we use the stage micrometer to determine the actual measurement of the eyepiece reticule at a particular magnification. The magnifications of the eyepiece lens and objective lens are irrelevant in the calibration. The ability of a microscope to view a structure relies on its maximum resolution. Anything smaller than the maximum resolution cannot be observed. Resolution is limited by the wavelength of the light source being used, as it is calculated as half of the wavelength of the light source. So, C is the correct answer. A is wrong because Magnification is the ability to enlarge an image. Electron microscope has allowed a greater magnification due to its high resolution. Technically, you can use light microscope to magnify just as much, but due to the low resolution, structures that cannot be seen are still not observed. The maximum resolutions of the light microscope and the electron microscope are 200 nanometers and 0.5 nanometers. If the membranes are greater than 200 nanometers apart, they should be seen under the light microscope. D is incorrect because a longer wavelength divided by 2 should result in a larger value, which would lead to a lower resolution. Cell structures that release energy are mitochondria. It is the site of aerobic respiration where ATP are produced. Mucus is a glycoprotein. After the protein component is synthesized at the rough ER, it is transported to the Golgi body. Glycosylation of the protein would take place. Then, the membrane buds off from the Golgi to form a secretory vesicle. The vesicle will move towards and fuse with the cell surface membrane. The content of the vesicle is then released via exocytosis. Prokaryotic cells contain circular DNA, so one is correct. The capsid is the protein coat of viruses. It is not a feature of prokaryotes. They have 70S ribosomes, which lie freely in the cytoplasm, allowing protein synthesis to occur. When they carry out transcription, RNA is formed. Bacteria are prokaryotes. They have 70S ribosomes. Plant cells have them too, in the mitochondria and the chloroplasts. 80S ribosomes are found in plant cells but not in prokaryotes. Neither of them contains centrioles. Bacteria have circular DNA that lies freely in the cytoplasm. Plant cells have circular DNA in their mitochondria and chloroplasts. The first step is to hydrolyze the non-reducing sugar using hydrochloric acid. This process involves breaking the glycosidic bond and releasing the monosaccharides. Then, we must neutralize the solution to prevent false positive results due to the acidic condition. After that, we can carry out Benedict's test as usual. Burette's reagent is used for protein testing, not sugars. One is possible. It shows the formation of a 1,4 glycosidic bond which is found in starch and glycogen. Two is also a 1,4 glycosidic bond but it occurs between two beta-glucose. The second molecule rotates 180 degrees as the OH groups are not on the same plane. Figure 3 shows the formation of a 1,6 glycosidic bond. It is found in glycogen and amylopectin, where the molecule branches. Amino acids and fatty acids have a carboxy group, where the C double bond O is found. Glycerol does not have any double bonds. Protein is composed of amino acids, so it contains C double bond O as well. A is incorrect because a triglyceride can contain a mixture of both saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. B is incorrect as two triglycerides cannot directly join to form a larger and stable molecule. Triglycerides are already the end product of the reaction between glycerol and three fatty acids. Ester bonds are found between glycerol and fatty acids in a triglyceride molecule. C is wrong because triglycerides are non-polar, hydrophobic, and insoluble in water. D is correct, as glycerol is joined to fatty acids via the ester bond. It is a covalent bond. The result of the test indicates that nectar contains non-reducing sugar, while honey contains reducing sugars. 
Therefore, the enzyme catalyzes a hydrolysis reaction, breaking the glycosidic bond in the non-reducing sugar and releasing monosaccharides, which are always reducing sugar. Maltose is a reducing sugar, so it is not correct. Both glucose and fructose are reducing sugars. They are the monosaccharides that form sucrose. It is a beta 1,4 glycosidic bond as the second monosaccharide has rotated 180 degrees. Alpha glucose molecules do not require rotation, as their OH groups on carbon 1 and 4 are on the same plane. We can count the number of peptide bonds by counting the CONH in the figure. As time goes by, more substrates are converted into products. The graph begins with the absorbance of the substrate and ends with the product. A is wrong because the substrate in X has a lower absorbance. B is the answer. C and D are both incorrect because the rate of reaction is high for both at the beginning and slows down towards the end. We know this by checking the graph's gradient. When lipids are hydrolyzed by lipase, glycerol and fatty acids are formed. One is correct as substrates are continually hydrolyzed, so their concentration decreases. Two is wrong. As more fatty acids form, the pH of the solution should decrease. Three is correct because the reduction of pH may disrupt the hydrogen and ionic bonds holding the tertiary structure of the enzyme. This causes the enzyme to change shape and denature. The cell surface membrane can range from 5 to 10 nanometers, with 7 nanometers being the most typical width. The carbohydrate chains typically face the cell's exterior. The exposure of the carbohydrate chains on the cell exterior allows them to participate in various functions, including cell-cell recognition, signaling, and interactions with the extracellular matrix. Sodium ions are charged. Therefore, they cannot pass through the cell surface membrane by simple diffusion due to the presence of a hydrophobic region. They can move through the membrane via both active transport and facilitated diffusion, depending on the concentration gradient and the cell's need. 5% sodium chloride solution has a high water potential due to its lower solute concentration. So, there is a net movement of water molecules from R to S by osmosis, down the water potential gradient. This results in an increase in the volume of S. When the cubes are left in the same solution for the same time, the acid diffuses the same distance into the cube. C is the only one showing the correct distance of the movement. Since 1 cm cube is smaller and 3 cm cube is larger, the square in the center appears to be smaller and larger compared to the 2 cm cube shown in the diagram above. A is incorrect because it indicates that the movement of acid exceeds what we expected. The packing of chromosomes is primarily due to histone proteins. These proteins form complexes called nucleosomes, which are fundamental units of DNA packaging in eukaryotic cells. Protamines replace histones, altering the packing of DNA. A, B, and C are the three stages in interface. D is mitosis, which occurs right before cytokinesis. Chromosomes condense and become visible during prophase, which is the first stage of mitosis. One is correct. Stem cells undergo both cell renewal and differentiation. Cell renewal allows stem cells to maintain their population by dividing and producing identical daughter cells, while differentiation enables them to specialize into various mature cell types. Two is incorrect because all body cells retain all of the genetic information in their DNA. The difference is that most cells switch off some of the genes that do not contribute to their specialized functions. 3 is correct. Adults have multipotent stem cells that can differentiate into a limited number of cell types within their tissues of origin. 4 is wrong. The length of telomeres in other cells decreases after cell division, but the number remains constant. 1 and 2 correctly describe the position of the nitrogenous base and the phosphate group in a nucleotide. 3 is correct as a water molecule is removed when they are joined together. 4 is wrong because they are linked by their phosphate and pentose sugar, not phosphate to phosphate. 
each base pair in the circular DNA should form two phosphodiester bonds with another base pair next to it. So, the total is 2700 times 2. One is correct as purines have two rings while pyrimidines have one ring. Two is correct because the pairing up of mRNA codons and tRNA anticodons occurs during translation. Three is incorrect. Base pairs always form with one purine and one pyrimidine. So, they are always three rings wide. Four is correct because AT and AU form two hydrogen bonds, while CG forms three. Total base pairs that a single replication fork can replicate in one hour is 50 base pairs per second times 3,600 seconds. Total base pairs to replicate is 150 million base pairs. We divide that by how much one replication fork can do. The nearest value is 835. DNA codes for protein. Amylase is an enzyme, so DNA directly codes for it. A is incorrect because sieve tube elements contain mitochondria. They can produce ATP. B is wrong because there is no active movement between the sieve plate. A pressure gradient mainly drives the movement. C is wrong because a companion cell does not have that function. D is the answer. Sieve tube elements do not have a nucleus. The fluorescence shows that the ions are transported from the root hair to the endodermis and stop before the Casparian strip. This shows the same movement when water moves through the apoplast pathway. They dissolve in water and move together with it. Since the Casparian strip is made up of suberin, it is impermeable to water. Epoplast pathway is blocked. Water continues by symplast pathway. But the lacking of fluorescence indicates that the ions do not follow from here onwards. A is wrong because it shows a mismatch between the definitions and the terms. B and C give the wrong definition of adhesion. It should be the attraction between water molecules and the hydrophilic parts of lignin. Furthermore, B provides an incorrect definition for cohesion. D is correct. When sucrose, a solute, enters the sieve tube element near the source, water potential is lowered. This causes a net movement of water into the cell by osmosis, down the water potential gradient, leading to an increase in hydrostatic pressure. Near the sink, the opposite occurs. Sucrose moves out of the sieve tube element, causing water to follow and lowering the hydrostatic pressure. When blood pressure increases in the right atrium, the right ventricle would experience the same. The pulmonary artery, which receives blood from the right ventricle, also has increased blood pressure. The alta receives blood from the left ventricle. The blood comes from the left atrium. It would experience a similar change in blood pressure with the left atrium. Oxygenated blood from the left atrium enters the right atrium, resulting in an increase in the percentage of oxygenated blood in the pulmonary artery. A is incorrect because water cannot be a solvent for lipid soluble, hydrophobic, and nonpolar biological molecules. B is wrong because nonpolar molecules are hydrophobic. C is incorrect as a high specific heat capacity means that it requires a large quantity of energy to increase its temperature. D is the answer. Water requires more energy to change its temperature compared to other substances. As a result, it takes water a longer time to both heat up and cool down, as it can absorb and release heat more gradually. A is correct. The arterial end has a high hydrostatic pressure, forcing water and other substances to be squeezed out, forming tissue fluid. B is not true. The water potential near the venue end is lower in the blood, in the capillaries, than in the tissue fluid due to the loss of fluid near the arterial end and the dissolved proteins that stay in the plasma. C is wrong because white blood cells such as phagocytes can move through the capillary wall and end up in the tissue fluid. D is wrong because it forms mostly near the arterial end. As a red blood cell passes through capillaries in the lungs, Carbon dioxide diffuses out from the blood into the alveolar space. This causes a decrease in the quantities of carbaminohemoglobin and hemoglobinic acid. Oxyhemoglobin should increase as oxygen diffuses into the blood. 
Carbonic anhydrase is an enzyme found in the red blood cells. It should not change. Only the bronchi and trachea contain cartilage. All three structures contain cilia, but the bronchial has very few of them. One is incorrect because the structure in the bronchi that provides mechanical support is the cartilage, not the collagen. Two is incorrect because when smooth muscle contracts, the lumen diameter decreases, resulting in a decrease in airflow. Three is correct. It allows alveoli to expand and increase the volume of air and recoil to force the air out. Tasobactin binds to two lipids. A bacterium needs to change both lipids for it to lose its ability to bind. Two is wrong because DNA mutation may alter an enzyme involved in the production of lipids. So, even though lipids are not made up of amino acids, they can still be altered when there is a change in the DNA. 3 is correct. A molecule that is very similar in many different species indicates that it is an essential molecule for them. This enables the antibiotic to have a high ability to kill bacteria, resulting in a lower chance of surviving cells that can mutate and evolve. 1 is wrong. Monoclonal antibodies are not cells. They cannot undergo mitosis. 2 is correct. Monoclonal refers to their production by a single clone of cells. So, they are identical and bind to the same antigen. 3 is correct. When they are introduced to a patient's body, they may be recognized as a non-self antigen and eliminated by the person's antibodies. We can modify them to prevent this from happening allowing them to continue functioning in the receiver's body. A vaccine is an artificial means of stimulating a person's immune response, thereby inducing artificial active immunity. The involvement of an immune response indicates that it is not a passive immunity. A vaccinated individual who successfully acquires immunity would not be a host for the pathogen. This reduces the risk of transmission resulting in a decrease in the number of cases. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.